Hi, welcome back to the studio of Art by Wendy. Today, I have an interesting little lesson to show you. It's about how artists are really magicians. We can actually do some pretty magical things on paper. Let me show you. Meet Max. This is my dog, Max, and this is his baby picture. And as you can see, he is a fluffy poodle. His hair is all quite scruffy here. Probably he was due for a haircut when I was working on this picture. But at any rate, what I want to show you is, doesn't he look fluffy? Can't you see that soft fluffiness of his fur? That's what I mean by magic. As an artist, a visual artist, you take a flat piece of paper and you make it look bumpy, rolly, and in this case, quite fluffy. And that's what I'm going to show you today. How to make the fur on your birds, or sorry, feathers on your birds, but actually fur on your animals to be that nice fluffy thing. It's the same technique, whether it's birds or, or uh, animals. So let's get started. So the first thing I do with any animal drawing is to make a pencil outline. One of the things I want you to notice when you look at the reference picture and then you look at my picture is how I've just done a smooth line here just to indicate how much further out the hair goes from the other color. Um, so I'll talk about that edge there later on when we get further on in our development. But it was something I wanted you to notice that I deliberately did it smooth, even though I know it isn't going to be smooth. It's more like this edge over here. So this is Alvin, and we're going to spend a bit of time drawing him for you and talking about how to make things fluffy. Once I've got my drawing set up, then the next thing I want to do is establish the first value. Now, always when I'm working with, with uh, hair or any kind of drawing, I'm always thinking of my value chart. So right now, I'm putting in the lightest value for this fur area. So you, as you can see, I'm working down in this area here on my value scale. <clears throat> so this is my base layer. And if you want to compare this to a situation in watercolor or oil or acrylic, this would be your layout color or blocking in. So right now I'm blocking in my, my lighter color, my lightest shade of fur. So this would be my first value. White being, of course, your very first value. So as you work away, uh, think about the direction of the fur. You never know when you're creating a pattern that you didn't see. <clears throat> and so just um, lay in this base, and then you're ready for the next layer on top of that. So as you can see, I'm gradually building up the values, layer by layer, looking to see which, which is darker than which. Now this is where it's important to make some comparisons. For example, this area here of the face is the same, pretty well the same value as this area right underneath his face. And yet in underneath here, there is a different value. So I'm looking for those subtle value changes and I'm <clears throat> always comparing to see which area is equal, which is a little bit darker. For example, I need a little bit more here and just slowly increasing the value in different areas. Now here you can see this line that separates the head from the body and has him looking around. And that's actually created by negative space because I'm really going up underneath in here to define those little bits of fur that show the difference in the head and the body. Now this is actually the second aspect that I wanted to show you in making fluffy fur. There's actually three things to think about. First of all, Remember, we're doing a magic trick here. So we're trying to, to trick our viewers into believing that they're looking at a three-dimensional cat. So the first thing is, it is a cat. It looks like a cat. So they're prepared to think cat and fur when they look at it. The next thing 
is getting those values right and having them show layers and layers of lights and darks. That's how we, we can show them. But the third, the third item you have to think about is the edges. What do the edges look like? For example, right here, I left it flat. But in actual fact, this is actually going up like this. And just watch what happens when I add these little bits of, of fluff to the fur, the spikes. You see how that begins to tell the eye that this is something that is soft and fluffy. And again, even on these edges, I'm going to have value changes because the, fleur, the fur is going to have lights and darks here. And that is the same with this area of the face, which I've also left straight just to show you the difference. And so if I go in here now and take out that line and put in some of that soft, soft lines there, you can see that already it has a, a fluffier look to it. Now I want you to notice the value difference. Look at all the different values in here. In actual fact, I think we could actually go up into this area right here and make this even darker to just give it that separation. And then that darkness tends to lighten up again as we move away from that area. However, when we get down into here, we can still see that there, it's darker here. Now, if you notice, I've also started working on the rest of the body and began to put another layer on it. And even as I'm working down this layer of the body, I'm also paying attention to the fact that there are light and dark spots. For example, there are a few dark shapes in here. There's some dark shapes in here. There's a little bit of dark shapes in here. So I'm looking at the dark shapes. If you notice, I did not add the finer points of the fur until the very end. So it's a building of layers and you're not adding those fine details until the very last step. Once the layers are the right values, then you can go in and sharpen a few, just sharpen a few points in here to give that fluffiness in this area. And um, and just tighten it up so that you don't your value changes make sense. And always comparing what's happening here to there, who's got the same values, whose are different. Okay. I wanted you to have another look just at this edge here. This is the after picture. And notice the Look at the range of values that are found right here, all the way out, to give that sense of fluffiness and the change of color all at the same time. So this gives you, the edge gives us a fluffiness over here, gives us a sense of fluffiness. So then now the eye can understand what these layers are all about and what's happening here. Even though Alvin, this is Alvin way, is not finished, you can already feel the fluffiness that's happening to create his fur. So layers, layers, layers. Now I have one more picture of Alvin. It's painted and it'll give you an idea of what these same layers look like when you see it in a painting. Well, here's Alvin and he's painted in watercolor. And he is a good example again of the three things I've been talking about. First of all, Looking at Alvin, you expect him to be soft and fluffy because that's the kind of subject he is. The second thing, if you take a look, you can see lots of value changes in all the different areas that we talked about in the pencil. And you can see how those built a depth that created that soft, full mass feeling. And then finally, looking at the edges, you can see how they have created a sense of 
roughness and texture that your eye is able to accept. Well, I hope you have fun making your own soft and fluffy furry animals as well. If you're looking for more information, I will be blogging on this topic in my March 2022 blog. And um, check out some of my other YouTube videos and my blog posts. I'm sure you'll find them helpful in your art. Wendy teaches outdoor sketching classes in the summer and she teaches in her studio and online throughout the year. Wendy produces original work in pencil and in watercolor. She completes commission work, particularly pet portraits, and produces cards and prints from some of her work.